Homemade, my knitting podcast where I talk primarily about what I've been knitting recently and I will occasionally talk about other fiber crafts which I will be doing today so stay tuned for that. If you're new here, my name is Michaela. I am coming to you from a beautiful, warm, 70 degree day in North Carolina where I live with my husband and our three little kiddos. Um, I have actually two finished objects to show today and a new cast on and a little bit of progress on some of my whips. Um, so let's jump right in. Um, if you have watched my last two episodes, you will see that I've been working for a while on a pair of socks for my sister-in-law, Patience, and I have finally finished them. And they are so beautiful. I love them. I kind of wish they were mine. <laughs> but they're so pretty. I just love the detail. And I, I said in my last episode, I love this heel. I don't know what you call it, um, but it just looks very intricate. I love it. Um, so yeah, these are the Wood Nymph socks. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. I'll link it below. Um, pretty easy to follow once you get the hang of it. This was only the second pair of socks I've ever knit, and for it being a chart, I'm pretty proud of myself for figuring it out. Um, it did take me a couple tries on some different sections that were kind of tricky for me just because the pattern wasn't super super clear or maybe it was clear but it's just different than the last socks that I made which were Kristen from Woolen Vine's favorite socks pattern which is also on Ravelry and she has a video that goes with it so I was able to see what she was doing there was no video for this so I was just kind of left to the words and the pattern and it kind of tripped me up a little bit but we got it done. These took me about two months to make and I hate that it took so long but the reason being is that usually I will take socks um, in my little sock bag which you all seem to love. <laughs> this is where I keep my small projects in. Um, I would usually take them in the car anytime we go on a trip or when we go to my in-laws I would take them there and it's just like a mindless knit that I can knit on but these socks were different because of the chart. I never really pulled them out. I would take them with me every time we'd go somewhere, but I would never actually pull them out to work on them because then I'd have to pull out the chart and my pen and I'd just have so many things. <laughs> so these really only got worked on during the day if my kids were cooperating. Um, but they're finally done and I just love them. Um, so yeah, they have this lace detail on the side. There's a right and a left, so they're not exactly the same. Um, so that's what the inside looks like. Um, so on the inside the pattern stops at the heel, which does make the foot part go a little quicker because you don't have to worry about the lace detail on both needles. And this is knit in Milamiya sock yarn. Um, the color was silver birch. And I will say, I don't love this yarn. Um, it wasn't terrible to work with. It's just, it's pretty coarse, pretty rustic. And I, I mean, I've never knit with like 100% wool, so I don't really know what I'm talking about, honestly. But to me, I'm a really tight knitter, and when I was having to move this yarn across the needles, if I was doing it too much, like two days ago, I was knitting relentlessly to get this, to get the second sock finished. And every time I'd pull the needles or the stitches across the needle, my thumb was going raw <laughs> because they don't just go effortlessly because I knit really tight so I was having to like pull on them and the yarn is so rough that my fingers were going raw um, but it does seem nice now that it's knit up and it did keep kind of twisting on me as I was knitting and so it would try to get knots in it and it was a little bit of a stress situation <laughs> but not too bad and I do have quite a bit left over, so I'll probably end up using um, the rest of it since it's a solid color. I'll probably end up using it for the heel and toe of a different sock, maybe in the future. Um, so yeah, that's my wood nymph socks. And I hope that my sister-in-law 
gets a lot of good use out of these. I hope this yarn holds up. It is a blend of wool and nylon, so I am hopeful that it will hold up pretty well. And I want to mention these sock blockers. So my husband bought me these for Christmas on Etsy. I don't know the shop name or anything. Um, he bought them at the beginning of December, maybe even late November. They just came in the mail this week. We had given up hope on them. And then they just showed up. He called me and was like, guess what's in the mail? And I said, what? And he's like, your sock blockers. <laughs> I thought they just disappeared. Um, they are very beautiful. They are wood burned. This is a hydrangea. They had different, um, different flowers. And while they look beautiful, I really like the way they look. I will say, I probably won't use these as much as I use my metal ugly monkey sock blockers because when I slide the socks on this, the edges are not, I mean, it feels smooth with my finger, but when I, like, when I put this sock on it, it felt like it was just gonna snag and, like, rip a hole in the sock. Um, it kind of made me nervous to even put them on here to show you, but they are beautiful, and I got a size 6, 7, because that's what size socks I'll probably be making most of it, most often for myself and for my family members, um, so they are beautiful, but I don't know. And maybe with different yarn it might be different. Or maybe I just need to take some sandpaper to the edges and try to smooth it out. Because I I would be heartbroken if I worked so hard <laughs> on some socks and then put them on here and they ripped. Or they got a big snag or something. I would be heartbroken. So, yeah. But they are nice and I'm glad they're finally here. Um, it's nice to know that they didn't just fall off the face of the earth. Um, I'm curious where all they've been and where they got stuck, I guess. So yeah, that's my wood nymph socks. I'm about to give them to my sister-in-law on Sunday and I will no longer, they will no longer be a part of my life. I have held them on, have, I've held on to them for so long. They're such a labor of love. Um, so it will be a little, a little sad to give them away, but I know that she'll like them. So, that's that. The next finished object is not a knitted object, it is a crochet object, and I made this because I was kind of feeling like I was in a slump, knit-wise, and knitting takes a little longer than crochet. I'm originally a crocheter, so I'm used to a quicker gratification, if you will, of things coming to fruition. So when I kind of felt like I was in a knitting slump, I thought, let me find something short and sweet that I can crochet up in like a day or two, just to kind of get my creative juices flowing, you know? So I recently saw on Gabriella from Meriwether Knitting's podcast that she had found this little bag on Pinterest that she was trying to make. I think she frogged hers, but because it wasn't as big as she thought, which I totally understand because the picture almost leads you to believe that it's going to be more of like a tote size bag, but it's not. Anyways, hers was the strawberries and cream one, but I found one that was little tulips and I thought it would be perfect for Easter. And even though it's small, I made it for my daughter and it's just the cutest little thing. It only took me like a day to make this, um, not even a day, I started it at like 3 in the afternoon one day and then I finished it before I went to bed. Um, I'm much faster at crochet than I am knitting, just because I've been doing it longer, but I just think it's so cute and it has a little um, rounded bottom. I think I might use this as her little Easter egg hunt basket. My daughter, um, she's two, almost three. Well, I shouldn't say almost, she's got a few months to go, but um, she loves it and I just think it's the perfect little size for her to tote around and put her Easter eggs in. And yeah, I just used um, some yarns that I had like from Walmart. Um, when it comes to crocheting, I feel like you don't really need nice yarns. I mean, for certain things maybe, but um, I know for knitting, like the size of your yarn it matters more and you want good quality thing for like garments and such but I just had a bunch of 
old Walmart yarn from blankets that I've made and I'm talking like two dollars a roll of yarn cheap yarn um, so I just went in my stash and I picked out some colors and ta-da I love it I <laughs> I really was hoping that it would turn out a little bigger because I wanted to also use it um, I was thinking oh I'll use it this spring when we go to the garden or this summer when we are going to the garden to harvest vegetables I'll put the vegetables in there um, yeah I I might could fit a tomato or two <laughs> but um, it's the perfect size for her so it belongs to Rosie now and I kind of want to make another one um, maybe with some like roses instead of tulips we'll see it didn't take long so I can always whip up another one if I really feel like it also my handles are not even at all <laughs> this was getting close to bedtime and uh, I just kind of sewed them on there as quick as I could. You can see this side's a lot shorter than this side, so they're not centered, but for its purpose, it will work just fine. <laughs> um, so yeah. Also, this got me thinking as I was making it. I was like, how cute would that be if you ignore the handles? How cute would that be as a little hat? It won't fit on my head. It's way too small, and I don't even think it would fit on her head, but um, it's kind of got me thinking maybe I should make a little hat. We'll see. I've got a lot going on already. <laughs> so there's that. I don't even know what this was called. It was just something on Pinterest. I'll see if I can put the link below so you can check it out. And I believe that's, yeah, that's my finished objects. Now I do have a new cast on. I was talking last week about, last week, it was like three weeks ago, my last episode, talking about a little onesie that I wanted to make for my future niece, Ashley. She'll be born in a couple, no, a few weeks now. Uh, the baby shower is in a week from tomorrow, so I'm really hoping that I can get this finished for her by then, but we'll see. <laughs> um, I'm gonna work on this monogamously all week to see if I can knock it out. And if you don't remember, I will put a picture over here of what this onesie looks like. It's called the Lily, Lily, I don't know how you pronounce it, Dahlia Solo, and I'm doing the romper bodysuit. So this is where I'm at so far. I've just, oh, that's the wrong side. I've just got the neck cuff and about eight rows of the chart completed. Um, it's so little. I chose to do the three month size, which is the smallest, and I knit pretty tight, but I didn't change my needles or anything um, because I'm kind of hoping that since I knit tight, it'll come out a little smaller than the three month size. And one of my kids are calling me. I think it, I think all is well. Um, so I'm hoping it'll come out as to more of a newborn size so that she can wear it as soon as she's born because she will be born in April and it's perfect springtime colors and it will be nice and light for the warm weather. I really do like it. And it's knitting up um, pretty quick even though these are small needles and this is a fingering weight yarn. I guess it's just because it's so small. But I'm really enjoying it. I just cast this on yesterday and I've made that progress so far, so I'm hopeful that if I work on this very diligently, I can have it ready for her baby shower next weekend. Fingers crossed. And the yarn I'm using for this is, someone commented to explain to me how to pronounce this, and I'm still probably gonna get it wrong, but it's uh, sh Sheepius. I can't do the, um, like the loogie thing that, <laughs> that she was talking about. Um, Apparently, when you say it, you're supposed to kind of like, it's very throaty, the S-C-H part. I can't do it. Um, but anyways, <laughs> this is the Sheepies Organic Cotton in Sweet Apple. And it's a very, very pale green. Like, not really a mint green, more of like a pale sage green. It's very pretty. And perfect for spring. I did not originally buy this for this project, but it couldn't have worked out 
more perfect because it is organic cotton, which is great for a new baby because they tend to have sensitive skin sometimes and the color is just perfect. And I have the perfect amount too, so match made in heaven. And it is very, very soft. I love it. I think this onesie is going to be um, just amazing, <laughs> for lack of a better word. I was trying to think of a word that, like, it would be worthy of envy. <laughs> I don't know if there's a word for that. Um, oh, randomly enough, inside my little bag is an acorn. I'm going to guess Rosie put this in here because she's obsessed with acorns. Yeah. Um, and I just have it living in my sock bag because I'm not currently working on any socks. And I'm hoping I can knock this out pretty quick. Um, oh, while I'm in here, let me show you this little, my little notions tin. My husband also got me this on Etsy for Christmas. It is the cutest little aluminum tin. I keep my stitch markers in there. Um, he also got me some stitch markers for Christmas. These little, um, they're little trees on the, wow, I'm terrible at this. Uh, okay. One-handed. I love this thing. I used to have all my, um, stitch markers in this little, um, drawstring bag thing. And it was a nightmare when I needed, like, or if I wanted a specific one, having to dig in there. So this is very handy. So that is my onesie. Oh, and I will say, the pattern had me a bit confused. I'm still a pretty new knitter. I, like I said before, I'm, I used to crochet all the time, but knitting is my newest hobby. And I can read a chart pretty well. The charts, actually the charts are easier to me than written instructions because some people's written instructions, they use different terms than other people or they just, things are just worded differently. Charts, from what I can tell so far, are pretty universal. I mean, you just follow the codes, you know? But there was a couple spots in here. Like, it says, after, you, after I finish the ribbing on the collar, Change to the larger circular needle. Okay, so I changed my needles. Pattern the stitches according to the first 20 rows on the chart. And I, now that I know what I'm doing, that makes sense. But when I first read it, I was like, pattern the stitches according? What? But then I realized it just means start knitting on the chart and do 20 rows. <laughs> so sometimes I... I feel like I need things dumbed down a little bit because I don't know but I got it I figured it out and for the chart the charts pretty hard on the eyes it's very small and I already don't have the best vision hence the glasses which aren't even up to date on my prescription I am going back to the eye doctor next month and I haven't been in six years so I expect that I'm gonna need some better glasses <laughs> so anyways I can't I cannot sit and look at the chart it kills my eyes so I have just been writing out every single row on the back of a preschool paper of my son's <laughs> because it's the only paper I could find and I was so excited to get started I was like ah this will work um, and this is this is not like a special paper this is from my baby son he was just coloring on it with a crayon, so don't worry, I'm not, uh, I'm not drawing all over my kids' schoolwork. Um, so yeah, now that I've got the hang of it and I'm writing it down, it seems to go pretty quick, and I'm, I'm excited about it. I also just love knitting with that yarn because it's so soft, and I can tell that it will not rub my fingers raw like the sock yarn did. <laughs> Speaking of rubbing fingers raw, um, I don't know how, but I swear every single day I get a new cut of some kind on my hands. And like t yesterday I noticed I had a paper cut on my thumb. This morning I have a paper cut on my finger. I have no idea where they come from and I never feel them when it happens. 
I just feel them later when something gets in the cut and I'm like, ah, what is that? <laughs> um, so yeah, does anybody else have that problem? My husband laughs at me every time because he's like, why are, why are you always getting cut? <laughs> and I have no idea. I just, I guess I'm just using my hands so much throughout the day. I'm very busy. So things just happen to, I don't know. And I'm also a little bit careless with things. So who knows? Um, now, I haven't got a lot of progress done on my other two whips. I haven't got any progress done on my Jupiter crop, so I won't even show that. Um, I really want to because I really, really, really want to wear it before it gets too warm. Today is really warm, but I know it's going to get back into the cooler temps next week. Um, it's not quite spring yet, so I'm hoping that I can maybe finish it in time to wear it before it would be way too hot because it is wool um it's super washed but it's still wool so it's really warm and it's color work so it's double layered so yeah i haven't worked on it at all this week though because i was trying to get those socks finished but i did get to work on my weekender light which i'll be honest when i first started this i was not very excited why is this inside out already? Anyways, <laughs> I was not very excited about it because I wasn't really feeling the color of it. I bought this yarn for Andrea Mowry's wool and honey sweater because it's it had like honeycombs on it and I thought orange would be nice with that. But then I realized the yarn wasn't going to be good with that kind of detail. So I went to this sweater instead and I just wasn't feeling the orange. like mainly because I wear glasses and I have bangs and I was like if I wear an orange sweater I'm gonna look like Velma from Scooby-Doo <laughs> um, my husband assured me that I would not look like Velma he said that I was much cuter <laughs> um, but it is starting to grow on me the more that I knit on it because I'm being I'm able to feel the texture of it now and I'm so excited to wear it so let's see that's the back this is how far I've gotten Try to stretch it out a little bit. Um, so you can see it's actually turned inside out. You knit it inside out. I mentioned that before and it's um, you have the purl on the right side and then there's the um, slip stitch going down the middle. And I mentioned before that I was going to make this more of a cropped sweater but the more I'm knitting on it I'm I don't know I think I might just make it how she has it or maybe I'll do like one inch shorter than she has it I haven't decided yet but I'm also very excited about this and I can't wait to wear it I'm not really as worried about finishing this before it gets warm because it is made with cotton yarn so it's it's pretty I mean it's it's heavy like it feels heavy but it's pretty light and it I think it'll be pretty breathable especially for like a summer evening it would be fine and one thing I do like about the color orange that I chose is that it's not such a rustic orange that it would be more of a fall orange, but it's actually, it's like right in the middle. So it, it can be worn in the spring and summer, I think. It's not too, it's not too autumnal. Is that how you say that? Autumnal? I had honestly never heard that word until I started watching knitting podcasts, and I heard a lot of people say it when, when referring to specific colors that you would wear in the fall or the autumn and it's a nice word very random piece of information there um yeah i do have these really cute little stitch markers on here this one is just a little ball of yarn and oh i love this one i actually want to get a pair of these little um sparrow scissors my sparrow? No, that's a, um, why can't I think of the word? I'll have to look it up. <laughs> it's a bird. Scissors. And, um, my, anyways, my scissors, I have, I had this little pair of crafting scissors, and what was I trying to cut? Oh, my ugly monkey sock blockers came in and I they were zip tied together with 
I'm going to say the strongest zip tie in the world because I could not get those things off and while trying to cut it, granted I was using little scissors, <laughs> but they were the only ones that would fit through the space um, to cut it and my scissors just broke straight in half. So I need to get some new crafting scissors and I want to get some that look like those, that look like this little bird. What is that bird called? I don't know why I'm having such a brain fart right now. <laughs> yeah, that's my Weekender light. Very excited to wear it. Even if I do look a little bit like Velma, it'll be fine. At least my hair is not super dark, so <laughs> I can get away with it, I guess. Not that there's anything wrong with Velma. But you know. Um, so... I think that's all I have to show for today. I'm looking around to see if there's anything that I missed. Oh, I do have something that I need to start sewing on. Now that the weather is getting warmer, I'll go grab it. I bought this dress. It's from the 60s. I'm very into vintage fashion, like vintage country fashion. So I bought this dress a couple years ago. It's just yellow gingham and it has the nice um, like waist shaping, I guess you would say. I forgot what they call that in sewing terms, <laughs> but it has the nice, um, you know, Maybe you'll know the word I'm thinking of. But I bought this years ago. Well, not if that sounds like forever, but it, maybe two years ago. And I love this dress. I love yellow. I love wearing yellow in the spring and the summer. And this is a very light dress, so it's perfect for spring and summer. But since I bought it, I have lost like 25 pounds. And um, yeah, the situation is... <laughs> quite too big. It was already a little big on me when I bought it, but I, it was on sale and I was like, I can make it work. And I did make it work, but I can no longer make it work. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is turn it inside out and sew the side seams in a little tighter because the, the elastic around the waist and where it comes out is totally fine. It, I don't care if that's super tight. Um, it just gapes under the arms right here. So I'm just gonna cinch in the waist there a little bit. It does have a zipper on it and so I, I thought first about maybe I could t cut the zipper out and pull it tighter in the back and then put a new zipper in but first of all I've never done that and second of all then I would just have giant armholes so I think I think turning it inside out and just sewing the side seams in a little bit more will do the job because it is a very lovely dress and I would like to wear it again if I can. I never get around to sewing as much as I'd like to. I like to sew because it's so fast. Well, depending. It can be fast and I like things with instant gratification. Who doesn't? But when I think about getting out my sewing machine, well, not getting it out, but like getting it ready or just threading a needle, I'm like, ah, uh, I don't really want to do that right now. <laughs> but then when I do it, it goes so quick and it's not even worth thinking about not doing, if that makes sense. Gosh, sometimes I feel like I have all my thoughts together and then I come on here and I'm talking and I'm just, I make no sense at all. If I don't make any sense, I'm very sorry. So that's all my crafting this week. I'm going to do a little sit and knit portion. Um, I'm just going to work on this weekend for light for a little bit and kind of give you guys a background on where the name Sugar Folk Homemade came from. So just in case anyone's curious. 
I feel like if if it were me and I was watching someone with that name, I would be like, where did that come from? That's such a strange name, Sugar Folk. Okay, what is going on here? <laughs> Forgive me, I've got quite a mess happening. Oh no. This is no bueno. My working yarn has gotten tangled up in an end that needs to be weaved in. Oh no. I don't know how this happened. I had to turn it back inside out to work on it. I don't even know why it was inside out to begin with. It's like it was ready to be shown to you. Okay. There's that. Now let's see if I can... This working yarn is just like hanging out all over the place. Okay. Got it. Thought I heard one of my children again. Okay, so. A couple years ago, after my daughter was born, she was probably, I would say, like six months old. I started to slip into uh, like a post, a mixture of like postpartum depression and seasonal depression because it was the dead of winter and it was a very cold winter if I remember so I didn't get out much and if you have kids you'll know what I mean when I say that those first few months of having a new baby really kind of strip you from an identity other than mom. Um, just because you're dedicating like every part of you to being their mom. I mean, a baby, that's what a baby needs, you know? And don't get me wrong, being a mother is the greatest blessing I have, I feel like, and I consider it one of my biggest accomplishments, even though I'm nowhere near finished, of course, my oldest is almost four. Um, but after I had my daughter, she was the second one, and there was two under two years old and it was very overwhelming quite an adjustment to make and I just I was kind of losing myself like I was I was just a mom and that was it and I could feel myself slipping into a bit of a funk so I knew I needed to find something to do for me and I had a history of crocheting my grandma taught me when I was little so I said, you know what, I need to start crocheting and find something to do for me and maybe I can make a little money while I'm at it. So I started this little business, I guess you could call it, uh, from my house where I would uh, crochet things like washcloth sets. I did a couple of bohemian wall hangings, some baby bonnets. Um, short little projects like that to sell. I would, um, I originally wanted to like make them to order. Well, no, that's not right. I wanted to like make something and then be like, hey, I have this, who wants to buy it? But it ended up being like I would make one thing and then a bunch of people would want it, so I'd have to make that same thing over and over again, which is very tedious if you, if you knit or crochet or any kind of craft, doing the exact same thing over and over again. Is very tedious um, but I did it I I did love it and it started to get me back to myself um, and I also made I started making candles soy candles I bought the wax I bought the fragrance oils and I'm not gonna lie those were some darn good candles <laughs> if there's one thing I hate it's when you buy a candle that smells really really good but then when you burn it it doesn't smell like at all so I had a generous hand with the fragrance oil in my candles and they sold very well I sold out of every one that I made and it was going really good I made a lot of profits um, it was fun when I did do it and anyways this business was called sugar folk homemade and I'll get more about where that came from in a second but um, so I did this little side hustle from my home and I only did it for maybe maybe three months max and it just got to be too much. Oh no, my battery's dying. That's not good. 
I wonder if I can fit my charger over here. I'll just hurry up. Okay, so um, it got to be too much because I was having to do it in the evenings because you don't want hot wax boiling on your stove with kids around. And I was also having to do my online college work in the evening. And the candles were very time sensitive. You had to do specific things at specific times and it was hard to juggle everything. So I ended up quitting, quitting the business or whatever, which wasn't a huge deal because I mean, it was just something I was doing from my house and online. Um, but I am so glad I did it because it brought me back to me and it helped get me out of that funk. I found my hobbies again. Um, it was just great. I, it was a good experience. And anyways, when I made my YouTube channel, I was thinking, well, what, what should I name it? And I thought, well, what better name than the name I used to use for my little crafting gig? <laughs> and Sugar Folk is a play on words between folk, which is just a style that I like, um, and the community in which we live, which I will not disclose. Um, but I thought that was the perfect little combination of words to imply that it was like local you know because the community is pretty well known here so I think when someone would read Sugar Folk they knew where I was coming from um, and homemade obviously things were homemade <laughs> um, so yeah I just thought I'd pull that name over here too I already had the logo and everything so just figured I'd use it again and I think it works nicely um, Speaking of nicely, you guys are all so kind. Every time I get a comment, I'm like a little nervous to read it <laughs> because I know people can be mean. Um, but everyone has been so, so kind. I am always taken aback by how kind you guys are. I mentioned it to my husband and he said, well, you know, most people who knit or crochet or do any kind of crafting like that, they're typically pretty patient people because you have to be with this kind of craft. It takes so long. Um, and patient people are usually a bit more kind, so it makes sense. Um, but still, I thank you guys very much for being so kind and so welcoming on my little corner of the internet. I can't believe how fast it's grown. Not that it's huge, but just to know there's like 200 people that are subscribed, it blows my mind. Um, so yeah, thank you guys, and I hope you enjoyed this. I know I'm always a little bit all over the place. I can't get my thoughts together for some reason, um, but I do enjoy doing this. I enjoy talking to you guys. I'm just working on this right now. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this, and if you, if you did and you haven't subscribed yet, please do, and leave a comment. Um, yeah, I guess I shouldn't ramble for too long because my phone's gonna die and if it deletes this whole video I will be very upset. I've had I've had a lot of technical problems when it comes to recording. So um yeah, I guess that's gonna be it for today. Um I hope to see you guys again or to talk to you guys again before Easter and hopefully I'll have some more finished objects and maybe some more spur of the moment crochet projects. Until then, happy crafting!